So everybody, welcome to this video. Thank you for joining. Sit back and relax and uh, hope you're well. So, my name is Owen Fox. I am a passionate grower on earth, an expander, and I love to reach for my best self and best happiness and energy and well-being in life. And I don't want anything to stop me. So, um, it's the evening now and I'm not bursting with energy, but I'm inspired and I'm in the vortex to create this video. <clears throat> so, we all want love. We're all hoping for and reaching for and looking for love, basically speaking. But... The key factor in finding the love of our life, so to speak, the, the highest vibrational relationship that we've ever experienced is to, to, to love ourselves and to, to, to establish the best relationship with ourselves first instead of looking from it, looking from for it from another person. And another way of saying this is like why ask ourselves the question why are we looking so desperately for, for love from another person and the answer is because we do not have a good relationship with ourselves. we're still traumatized and unhealed from our past and our childhood so, so much that we're not we don't feel good or happy or safe or well with our own life with our only ourselves we feel lonely or insecure and dissatisfied or unfulfilled because we're not managing our own life and our own relationships with other people, our friendships, our family, our relationships with strangers, and the most important is our how we feel and our relationship with ourselves. <clears throat> so when we feel happy and content and fulfilled and satisfied with ourselves and the life that we've put together around us, our social setting, our some people go to church. One, somebody told me lately, and I'm not sure if it's true or not. But the biggest reason people go to church is not for the religious aspect, but even for the sense of belonging or community. And I'm a huge believer in community. When we feel plugged in and a sense of belonging, we're so much happier and we find this satisfaction and contentment or fulfillment and safety that we're all craving. But when we don't get that, we desperately look for a savior in another human being, our partner, our romantic savior. So the more we, we isolate ourselves and disconnect ourselves in life, the more we'll desperately look for a drug. And that's why people are drug addicts, everyone. And that's when we make another person, a relationship, our drug also. We become a dependent. They're like our drug. That's not love. That's dependency and drug, drug, is drug addiction. So we can, have, we can use another person as a drug because we're so dis disconnected and suffering. They're the two reasons why people use drugs, everyone. Actual, like, chemical drugs that we know of in society. It's because of f two things. It's because to numb the pain of their suffering that they have it within them from their past experiences and their childhood. To numb the pain. And that is, they don't know what to do and how to deal with the pain. So they take drugs to numb and distract themselves. That's, that's one of the reasons. The second reason is because people are feeling so disconnected and alone that's why they take drugs and it's related to pain again so this the solution the remedy is not to lock up people and to isolate them and to shame them and blame them but the solution is to get people healing start on the healing path and self-discovery path okay and the second one is to deal with the, the other cause which is disconnection and that's to help people have a purpose and a reason in life and to feel connected again a sense of community and belonging like living in a tribe or a big community. That's why there was, this, there was a, a very interesting thing observed. When they gave inmates in a prison like puppies to look after, they gave them a sense of responsibility and meaning and purpose and like importance. They felt a part of belonging, even to the puppy. And there was unconditional love and acceptance from the puppy. The, the crime rate, or the, the problem rate in the prison diminished dramatically. Inmates started behaving nicer. They were so much happier. It was so much better for everybody. I'm just going to read a question, comments, okay now? So, Austin says, Hi, on. I love your videos as I watch, the, all the I watch them all the time. <laughs> Thanks, Austin. That's <laughs> happy for me to hear that. <laughs> I put a lot of effort into them, so to speak, but it's inspired. But yeah, a bit of time and stuff like that. 
bit of energy. I'm happy to hear that, thank you. Diana says, excellent. Cheryl says, such an important thing in life. And we all have our old wounds, whether we realise it or not. I agree with that. Thank you, Owen. Thank you, Cheryl. Lovely to see you watching. I love to see you watching for sure. Diana says, okay, look. Okay, aloha, Angela. Hello. Emily says, warm-hearted, loving soul. Of course I am. That's, of course I am. We all are. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Karen. Okay, so now everyone's going to get onto the more stereotypical um, what happens in relationships when we fall in love and people get connected, okay? This is an interesting one, so stay tuned. And everyone, feel welcome to share the video at any stage. And thanks for all your likes, love and support and your comments. Karen says, you are inspiring. Thanks, Karen. <laughs> You're inspiring too, and I love your art deeply. Stephanie says, beautiful. Okay, cool. So what happens to everyone? Why do we, what happens when we fall in love and what, what's the psychological state we enter? So at the beginning, why are relationships so like happy and fulfilling and fun? Okay, I'm just going to rattle it off. Because one is because we think the best of people. We're looking for their best points. We're looking for their good points, everyone. It's, it's, ama it's crazy. It's amazing. It's ridiculous. It's wonderful. It's fun. It's fascinating. It's riveting. We're feeling this sense of belonging and community that we've been craving for. And we're, we're seeing the best in the other person. <laughs> but everyone, what's making me laugh is the funny thing is we don't need this excuse of a new connection, a romantic person we think is perfect to look and to see and to go find and anticipate the best qualities from another human being. We can think this way towards our ex who hurt us. We can think this about towards other, our family members who may have hurt us. We don't ha What we usually do as human beings is we remember and talk about the bad, the worst behaviours or points in a relationship with somebody. And we, did, we, we neglect to focus on and to talk about and to think about the best, happiest memories and behaviours of the people who tried their best and did their best with what they knew in life. My stepdad, everyone is a mixture, everyone. My dad, my exes, they did lovely stuff for me. But they also obviously didn't do some lovely stuff too. And in the past, they used to think about this more than now their beautiful points. And now I, know, I think and I talk about the best things and the fa happiest memories and what they did for me, how they tried and how it was hard for them too. You know, life wasn't easy for them too. And they could have been way worse. They could have done other stuff. They could have not shown up in certain ways, but they did show up in certain ways. They, they, they were kind and loving and provided in different ways. They gave in different ways. They did their best with their wounds and level of awareness and consciousness. And so did I. No, I'm not better than them. They ain't better than me. We're just we all doing our best, everyone. Life can be challenging. So the secret to maintain lasting, lovely relationships even if you break up, to break up lovely in a lovely way is actually to stay focused on the good points of people and to love, cherish and appreciate. And when you love, cherish, appreciate and shine the focus of your mind on the good aspects of somebody, that's when you're continuously going to be in a mode of love, gratitude, appreciation, compliments and praise, acknowledgement of the goodness and the effort that people put in and the struggles, attentiveness to the struggles and the hardships that they have. And this brings compassion and this brings inspired responses instead of destructive reactions, which of course it's destructive reactions and the focusing on the negative stuff that makes breakups happen in the first place and arguments and dysfunctional behaviors. Okay. So Cheryl says we're missing the, the feeling, the good feeling. So we get it from anywhere else, like stuff like food. Um, um, sex, drugs, alcohol and Cheryl says the answer is inside and yes the answer is inside and where does the answer come from in the inside it comes from our, our focus our thoughts, our mind it comes from the way we perceive it comes from are we in alignment with our higher self like an angel does an angel get jealous? depressed, sad 
lonely. It doesn't, no way. Higher vibrational beings, everybody. They live in a state of basically like pure positive focus, pure positive attention. It's like the way you look at your child most of the time. You, you, you look through the eyes of source. You look through the eyes of love. You don't, you're not criticizing your child for falling over. Hey, you, look at you, you dummy. You fell over. <laughs> the child doesn't know what it doesn't know. And we can't expect the child or the adult to know what it doesn't know. To be at a stage of development higher than it is at the moment. So if we look through the eyes of an angel, through the eyes of our inner being that we truly are, we, we will feel well emotionally and we will have inspired responses inspire us and come to us. It won't be a place of forced or effortsome actions. It will be much more a place of clear-sighted, inspired actions more in the flow. So when you keep aligning with thoughts and perceptions and memories and imaginations, okay, that feel good and connect, aligned with your inner being, you're going to keep creating and adding beauty to your relationship to keep it beautiful. That's the answer to the topic of this video. That's how, that's why relationships start good because they, 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 they catapult you into seeing through the eyes of source, like an angel, like your inner being. But why they go downhill is because you get to know them better and you see they're not perfect points and they're not perfect points is like more powerful than your cultivate than your ability to focus that you have not cultivated yet. So when you learn to focus and cultivate the power of focusing like your inner being, that's when you will see imperfections, but you will not focus there and feed it with a continuous or regular powerful stream of energy and attention and focus which will magnify it and create emotional disturbance in you, like irritation, anger, irritance, um, loneliness, um, frustration, um, disappointment. When you see through the eyes of source, these things will pass by you like a cloud, but you'll refocus and you're going to, focus on appreciation and gratitude in your entire life you will focus on maintaining a balanced harmonious life and the good things about the other person will be the object of your focusing so you're going to speak nicely and they're going to speak much nicer to you because they will see you don't react as long or as bad or at all to their reactions or their disconnection from their source they're going to be impressed by you and they're going to love and appreciate you for that because everyone else in their life is going to get triggered because they're triggered but you're going to keep getting less triggered or for less often and then not triggered many times after they've been triggered or imperfect and they're going to love you for your unconditional love and acceptance of them and at the end of the day, if they happen to be in a different vibrational state altogether, all that's going to happen is if they, if you may not wish to be in a relationship with a person who's too negative for too long or for too much, but it's not going to be your focus. You're just going to say, hey, I love you. I think it better if we're friends and you're a great person and I love you. You have so many amazing points and I wish you all the best, but I think it might be better if we became friends. What? what do you think you know <laughs> no big arguments or no criticism no blaming or name calling no like venting a whole lot of emotions on the other person so that's all you need to do everybody diana says heartfelt words you understand that's good Hirsch says, I think most people don't have neither any aim or love whenever they get into a relationship. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, most people do not know about this stuff. So this is like valuable information to learn. Um. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, everyone. Thanks for watching. I hope this video helped. There's more to come in this topic, but that's enough for now. And wish you a beautiful day. So yeah, some fun facts in there. Um, Eckhoff. Cheryl says, you're awesome, my friend. Bless you. Thank you, Cheryl. Lots of love to you all. Have a beautiful day and happy Christmas time. It's December now. Um, early December 2017. So let's count our blessings this season and gratitude for all that we have and everything that's temporary in our life. So everything is a lesson or a blessing and people come in for a purpose. There's meaning in every, everybody that's ever entered our life. So let's be grateful for all the lessons and all the triggers and keep learning from every trigger to think better and just to learn the lessons better too. We don't, we don't have to be upset with triggers or emotions. The emotions and triggers are our friend and they have a great deal to teach us and to help us to expand in life. So go beyond forgiving your past or the past people, but learn to love, appreciate them and gratitude for everything that they've helped you to learn and know learn what you don't want and learn what you do want and to teach to appreciate the opposite of their dysfunctional behavior also so in which case your desires can be can manifest because you've learned what you don't want so deeply which is a beautiful deep blessing and you never know what you want if you couldn't experience the stuff that you didn't like in the past so be grateful for that and thank them in your heart take care everyone I gotta go now lots of love have a great day Don't forget, one-to-one -one consultations, you can inbox me on, on life and everything. <laughs>